Alrighty, this is a quick uh, follow-up from my last video. Um, after thinking about this a bit more and um, getting a couple of comments on the last video, in particular um, from Scarecrow, um, I noticed that he is using the same gasket material as I'm using. So um, that really only leaves one thing left that uh, could be causing my um, bad water situation, and that's the stainless steel itself. Um, I did mention um, that I got this stainless steel second hand on a job and it was in a kitchen being used as a food prep bench which is a bit worrying if it is um, a lower grade stainless steel but uh, I've come up with a little way of testing this once and for all I've got these two setups here this is um, my old steel this is a um, 302 um, or whatever you want to call it I can't remember what it's called now but um, yeah, I think it's a three or four, sorry, stainless steel. And it's got the rubber gaskets uh, in between as a spacer. So I'm going to try that first and run it for a while and see how that goes. And then I'm going to whack this in. And this has just got um, bits of plastic to space this out. And I'll try that out and see how that goes. And I'm embedding and it's going to go shit and that's going to go good. So I'll hook those up now and um, see how we go. Alright, so that's um, cruising along. It's been going for a couple minutes or so. I've cranked it up a little bit. It's sitting on about 16 amps. Just to speed up this process. Um, the plates themselves weren't really clean. Like, I had fingerprints all over them. And, um, and uh, yeah, so if I get a little bit of dirty water, I'm not fussed about that. It's the real full-on crap that I was getting in the other situation that I'm looking for. So um, I'm going to let this run for a while, I'll check it again and then I'll try out the other plate. Alrighty, this has been running now for um, a good 15 minutes or so, which um, was uh, more than enough time for the other plates to get all full of crap. Seems alright so far. Um, the water's a little bit murky, but that doesn't surprise me too much. The water was tap water and... Um, if the plates weren't very clean. So, and it's a different colour too than what I was getting. So I'm going to um, take this out now and um, swap it over to the other plates and see what I get out of that. And then I'll inspect them both. Okay, the other plate's in now. Um, i got fresh water. It's been on for about a minute. About the same amps, 15, 16 amps. So I'll let that go for a bit and see what happens. Okay, this has been running for about 15 minutes now and I think we have a winner. This sludge is pretty gross. Um, next thing to do now is to pull these plates apart and see what they look like inside. But um, it's pretty obvious that this steel is um, not 316L, it's um, a shit quality of steel. And um, I'll have to get some more steel and make some new plates. Bit of a drag, but um, that's the way these things go sometimes. So anyway, I'll um, pull these apart in a sec and uh, see what they look like. Alright, so I've um, completed this test. And um, <clears throat> this is the first plates, the um, my uh, old plates, with uh, the rubber <clears throat> gaskets around them. And they've come up pretty clean. Um, I mean, they were not clean when I put them in, and they generate a little bit of dirty water because of that. And these weren't gaskets that I'd cleaned yet, so there could have been a little bit of oil on them as well. But um, they didn't generate too much. Now, this is a plate I took out now. After I ran it for about half an hour, even though the water was getting really crappy, uh, I didn't notice any real marks on the stainless steel. So what I did was <clears throat> tip most of the water out and increase the um, electrolyte concentration quite a bit and just dipped each corner in. And uh, I also changed the gasket. So on this side, it's just plastic strips. On this side was the gasket material, the rubber. And as you can see, both sides have discolored 
quite badly. Let's see this line down here. And this here is one of the plates that I took out of my sandwich um, dry cell. And as you can see, it's pretty crap. Now I thought in order to be um, thorough, I better um, do this um, corner test to the other older plates as well. So that's what I'm doing now. This is um, pretty much done now. I'm going to pull this out. Uh, both of them were, I had to keep the amp up, amps up quite a bit. 10, 15 amps in between somewhere there. So yeah, I'll pull that out now and um, see what it looks like. Alright, and that's what these plates look like as opposed to these. So that's pretty conclusive as far as I'm concerned. Um, this discoloration on here is because I use the same water that these plates are in. Um, so I'm absolutely not shocked at that at all. Uh, it's the same amount of, pretty much the same amount of discoloration on both sides. If anything, the side with the gasket, there's a bit less. Um, so yeah, obviously I need to get some new stainless steel. Um, this stuff is crap. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, shit happens. Um, I'm actually would have preferred it to have been the steel plates than the gaskets, because um, the plates didn't cost me anything, and there were I think the gaskets were actually more labour intensive to make than what the plates were. So I only made like twelve plates. Um, the hardest part is tracking down some of this um, three sixteen L stainless steel. It's a bit hard to find in Melbourne. So that's going to be my next um, challenge, trying to find some of that so I can make some new plates. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to do this little tack on video uh, to this so that I could throw a question out there to anyone who might be able to answer it for me. Um, this is for anyone who has uh, a system that can be wired up either with neutral plates or without neutral plates and also someone who has a variable power supply. Um, Unfortunately, I can't test it myself at the moment because one, I don't have the power supply, and two, uh, I have to get some more stainless steel to make new plates. Um, it's basically, if you took uh, your current neutral plate system, say with five neutral plates, and um, you set it at whatever amps and recording how much gas you're getting out, and then rewired the system so that there was no neutral plates, and used the variable power supply to... Um, have the volts right off and then slowly cranked up until they're matching um, the voltage that you were originally getting between the uh, plates on the neutral system. So for example if you're running um, 14 volts originally um, run it at I think it's 2.33 volts um, or maybe use a voltmeter to actually check exactly what you're getting and yeah match the volts and just see um, one if you're getting the same amps um, two, how much gas you're getting, and um, three, if you're not getting the same amps at those volts, what volts you have to set it out in order to get those same amps. Um, yeah, it's just something I'd love to know. Um, it'd help with um, designs in the future, especially since I haven't cut these new plates yet and have to get the steel. And um, yeah, just something I thought I'd throw out there. So yeah, if anyone can help me with that, I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, um, I guess I'll have to, uh, as I said, source some new steel and um, build my new bubbler container, water container, and a few other things. So yeah, um, till then, I'll see you all soon.